dog owners unite. Are you ready to get to know your dog better? Welcome to America's Dog Whisperers with Mark German and Janice Wolf. This program will help make your good dog great and your great dog fabulous. Now, here's Mark and Janice. Hello, Pal Talk people. Uh, thanks for coming to the show. My name's Mark German. I am America's Dog Whisperer. And we have Janice. Hello, Janice. And I'm Janice Wolf, New Jersey's Dog Whisperer. And I may be having an audio play problem here, but I'm going to try to work on it. All right, that's sounding good. Um, okay. Welcome to the show, everybody. Everybody that's been following along for several weeks now. Some of you have our books and have read the book and followed us along with how to teach your dog what you expect of him. We're not dog trainers. We're going to discuss that tonight. We're going to discuss a little bit about leadership and how dogs do behave. And then maybe you can understand where we're coming from when we say we teach dogs, not train them. I think okay. Janice is still, okay. Yep, I got it. Um, yeah, because what happens with most people, as Mark and I learn every time we walk to a home or do an event, people tend to get so overly focused on their dogs that they kind of give up their own lives. What you guys have to do is realize that you have a life. It's like if you're in a movie theater and somebody's talking behind you, you're going to shush them and watch the movie. But when people are looking at their dogs and I go into a home and Mark goes into a home or we do events, even after we tell people look up at the ceiling, I tell people look, we're hunting for antelope. That usually cracks them up. And I say, look, there's an antelope there because we focus and we just refuse to understand that we cannot stare at our dogs after correcting them. So today, Mark and I are going to go into that and explain to you guys why it's so important for you to look away after you make a correction and take your energy off of your dog. Mark, go ahead. All right, so here's where we're coming from. Here's what we try to teach people to understand. Um, open your mind up and just think for a minute, and it'll make some common sense to you. We treat dogs like dogs. Now, in the dog world, if we're thinking about wolves, and we've all, we all might not be an expert on wolves, and neither am I, but I understand canine behavior. Remember, wolves are canines. Dogs are descendants of the wolves. So they're still canines. Everybody agrees on that. We shorten the canine species name to dog. Well, it's a domesticated dog. They're still not in the wild, but they still have that tendency to act like a canine. Now, in the wild, they roam in packs. And I call them, I say they roam. Canine species is a roaming species. The only reason they're roaming is to look for food. They have to survive. The only way they can find food is to go look for it. Now, when they go look for food, I don't see the pack leader, and you know there's a leader and the rest are followers or the pack. You all know that. But I don't see the leader taking his pack for rollerblade riding, bicycle riding, skateboard riding. All I imagine him doing out in the, in the woods is just walking, just walking through the woods looking for something to eat. Now, that's what I consider one of the four essentials is the, the walk. And the reason, the only reason we go for walks is to go look for food in the dog's mind, if we think like a dog. He's going to know that, that we, are that we are leading him and he's following us if you walk your dog properly. And if you do that twice a day and then feed him, that's what's going to make you become a leader. The leader of a pack is always calm. If there's something that's going on, he's the one that handles it. And this is where us whisperers change people's lives. Because a lot of times if they say, my dog is out of control, he's jumping, he's barking, he's carrying on air, all the people have to do is look in the mirror. Because their life is the same thing. And Janice is going to talk a little bit about people's lives. Okay. Um, most of the time what we do is we call it a Dr. Phil moment. Um, people get so, again, so focused on things. And all they do is worry about what's going to happen, what could happen. Um, now, 
if you have a dog who ran out the door, like one of my clients I just did in Texas last week, her last dog was killed by a car. So when she opens the front door, she's like a, a, a nutcase because all she keeps thinking of is, oh, my God, my other dog ran out the door. She almost refused to just leave the dog there. When we walk in the house, we always just go in the house. The dog doesn't get out past us. She was so worried, even though I had told her, please just let us come in, let me come in, just ignore the dog. She was just so focused on that dog that the dog started jumping and running towards the door. Had she just let this dog be a dog and let her just be welcoming her guests in, the dog wouldn't have done that. I sat down with her. I had her crying. Mark and I do this all the time. We call it our Dr. Phil moments. I had her crying because she had gotten this dog within a few weeks after she had lost the other one. So her energy was very, very weak when this dog came into her life. Well, of course, this dog was having issues because she was still living in the past with her guilt and her frustration and her, pa her love and her paranoia that her another dog would live the same way and have the same fate being hit by a car. So what I had to do before I even started looking at the dog, working with the dog, is to have what we call the Dr. Phil moments. She was crying. She was bawling. She was hugging me. I felt so guilty. I've always felt this. I've never let it out. My kids were so upset. And because she, the dog, had gotten out under the time she was watching the dog, the family almost kind of blamed her. It wasn't her fault. But in order for us to help the dog that the person has now, your dog now in this moment, she had to give up everything that was in her. And some people really start crying because they realize that they've been carrying this around and that their anger, fear, frustration, guilt is what is ruining their new dog and giving their new dog issues. So the most important thing that you guys all need to understand is that you have to live in this moment. Live now. We don't, nobody knows if we'll be here in a year. Who cares? We're here now. Our dogs live in the moment, and we need to do that as well. So, Mark, um, do you want to talk a little about leadership and why it's so important for a leader to be strong and not fearful and not apprehensive? Well, and that's the, our, you know, we talk about the four essentials to a stable dog in our book. Oh, um, you, can, you can find the book at America's Dog Whisperer, Inc. com. You can email njdogwhisperer at aol.com. Order a copy of our book. If you're gonna, if you're gonna play along every week, at least uh, you know, be serious about the dogs. And if if you care about dogs, tell your friends that have dogs with issues, even though you may not. We're we're just here to help people with their dogs, and then uh, to go around the country training more dog whisperers the technique that we use because if you follow it along and understand that canines are canines treat your dog like a dog first and then you can 